My name is Kristen Kibblehouse, and I am the Community Engagement Manager for the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy. We are a nonprofit based here in Chatham, Massachusetts, which is located on Cape Cod. If you're familiar how Cape Cod looks, it kind of looks like an arm. So we are located in the elbow. So that is where we are located. And what we do is we are a nonprofit that helps fund and also help conduct the great white shark research that is being done through the Massachusetts Division of Marine Fisheries and with that scientist, Dr. Greg Skomal. So that is a little bit of what we are doing here in Chatham and throughout the coast of Cape Cod and Massachusetts. So again, thank you guys. Today, we are going to be learning about sharks in movies and specifically going into sharks in Finding Nemo. So as I said, this is the worksheet you guys will be filling throughout our presentation today, or if you want to do that afterwards, you are more than welcome to do so as well. This is that worksheet. So again, give you guys a few more seconds. If you would like to get that worksheet, go ahead and print that out, pull it up on an iPad or something to follow along. But with that, we are going to get started today. So first off, we are going to be comparing sharks and shark behavior in Finding Nemo to real sharks in our oceans to see does the people that make these movies get shark behavior right? Now, if you've been following around last week, we talked a lot about shark behavior in a few of our lessons. So this is also going to be a great review for those lessons from last week as well. So let's first look at one of the more famous sharks in Finding Nemo, Bruce, our white shark or our great white shark. Now we see that Bruce is very rec recognizable. He does have those triangular pointy teeth in his system. And if you do look closely at Bruce's jaw, he does have those multiple rows of teeth that all sharks have. Now, I want you to give a few seconds here to look at Bruce the white shark and give some mental notes. What does he look like? What does his coloration look like? What does maybe his eye placement, his nose, do sharks smile like that? I want you to think about how do or how does Bruce maybe look different from a real white shark? Now, if you're looking, like I said, looking at his fins, maybe his coloration, you might see that great white sharks really don't have those black tips on their fins like Bruce does, as you can see. So our real great white shark does kind of give a little bit of a smile like Bruce does, but their fins aren't as black tipped. They are more gray than that blue color, but Bruce is sporting that famous white belly that great white sharks do have. So that's Bruce. Now let's look at another great white shark in movies. Our Lino, or he is the great white shark in Shark Tales. He's also depicted as a great white shark. Now I want you to look at Lino and I want you to think what would Lino be doing that not just great white sharks, but all sharks in our oceans wouldn't be doing. So if we look at Lino, what is something that he is doing in this photo that I'm showing you that sharks in our oceans couldn't do? Hmm, what would Lino be doing? Now, if you're looking at their fins, if you remember from last week, I did a presentation on what makes a shark a shark. And we learned that sharks fins are hard and rigid, that sharks cannot move their fins and kind of sit in this pose that our friend Lino the shark is doing. If this was a real shark, his fins would stay straight out to the sides, just like our photo here of this great white shark. You can see that the shark is coming up to take bait, but those pectoral fins are those side fins are sitting out straight to the side. So he would not be 
crossing, giving us our shark sass as Wino is doing. Next, we're going to look at another shark from Finding Nemo, which is Destiny the Whale Shark. And Destiny is probably one of my favorite characters. And Destiny is from Finding Dory, but she is one of my favorite characters in movies, Destiny the Whale Shark. So I want you guys to look at Destiny. And I want you to look at her coloration, look at where, look at her mouth. You see that Destiny doesn't have any teeth. Do you think that whale sharks have teeth? Hmm, do whale sharks have teeth? Now, if you're sitting there and saying, yes, you are correct, but whale sharks they don't have sharp and pointy teeth like the white shark would, but they do have very, very small, fine teeth still in their body. So you can see here a photo of an actual whale shark. The animators got Destiny pretty accurate with those bright white spots, the blue coloring, a lighter stomach. Her eyes are still placed on the sides of her heads. They do have a wide mouth because whale sharks are filter feeders. So they do not have that sharp and pointy teeth to eat fish and marine mammals and squid because they are filtering the plankton out of the water for them to eat. So for our whale shark destiny and finding Dory, they did a pretty good job in accurately depicting our whale sharks. Now, Let's look at our shark from The Little Mermaid. And here in The Little Mermaid, our villain in here is our white shark when it is chasing Ariel and flounder throughout the shipwreck. So I want you to look at our villain white shark in our Little Mermaid scene. And what looks different here in our white shark compared to a real life great white shark. What do we think? What looks different? Looks, look at the jaw, the eyes. You can see flounder is kind of inside of the shark mouth at this point as well. What do we think is different about the great white shark in The Little Mermaid than in real life? If we are saying, well, this shark doesn't have multiple rows of teeth. It just has one row of teeth. You are correct. So that's something that they did not depict accurately in The Little Mermaid. And we also know that, do we think shark's eyes are yellow and red? Hmm, are shark's eyes the color yellow and red? No, they are not. You can see here in our real life photo of a great white shark, those multiple rows of teeth, but also their eye color is not yellow or red. Now, in a lot of photos of great white sharks, they do look like they have a black eye. But if you actually look at the color of their eye, they have a brown eye color. It's just how, how the light will reflect off of the eyes of sharks. Sometimes they just look like they have a solid black eye. But a gray white shark, their eyes are brown in color. And last but not least, let's look at a hammerhead shark from The Little Mermaid 2, so the second Little Mermaid movie, and you will see again. Let's look at this hammerhead. He's kind of depicted a little scary. He's giving us a snarl. He's not looking very happy to see who is ever on the other side of the photo. But again, we see that this hammerhead has red eyes and their teeth doesn't kind of looks like it it has teeth at least and it's coloration so i want you guys to look at this hammerhead from the little mermaid and see what is really different here what looks different from a real life hammerhead and you'll be able to notice that again hammerheads do not have yellow and red eyes. No sharks have yellow and red eyes, but they did show that those eyes are on either end of that long head or their hammer shaped head. And they do have a lighter belly and a darker top side to their body. 
So our illustrators and our animators did get that part right as well, but hammerheads do not have that color in their eye. Now, after we looked at all these real life, these real life sharks versus movie sharks, what did you notice about these movie sharks and how they are depicted? Or some of these sharks? What did we notice about how some of these sharks in movies are depicted? Hmm. What do we think? Do we think that maybe some of them are depicted as scary and that they're not supposed to be maybe as friendly as maybe Destiny the whale shark is in Finding Nemo, or I should say Finding Dory. You know, Destiny is depicted as a very friendly shark. She's supposed to be helpful to Dory in, you know, finding her way back home. But then we see sharks like the great white in The Little Mermaid or our hammerheads in, in The Little Mermaid that are really depicted as a scary shark. And unfortunately, this is how a lot of sharks are depicted in movies as these villains, these scary creatures. But we have to remember that sharks are really not that scary and they are not out to get us. That's kind of how the storyline is for our friend Lino, the great white shark in Shark Tales. How Lino is supposed to be this scary great white shark around the coral reef, but he decides that he doesn't want, want, want to be that. And he doesn't want to be the scary shark and he wants to be friends with everyone in our ocean. So this is how real life sharks versus our movie sharks. But now let's get into shark behavior in Finding Nemo. So we know we already talked about our great white shark, Bruce, but then we also have the Mako shark, Anchor, and Chum, who is our hammerhead shark. So let's talk about these sharks and how they behave in Finding Nemo and if it is accurately depicted in how these sharks would act in real life. So my first question I have is, Bruce, Anchor, and Chum all hang out together in a group or what scientists call a shiver of sharks. Would we find a shiver of white mako and hammerhead sharks together in our oceans? So do you think we would find great white sharks, hammerhead sharks, and mako sharks all swimming together in a shiver in our oceans? What do you think? If you are thinking, no, you are correct. You would not see all of these species of sharks swimming together in our oceans. But let's expand that a little bit. Do you think that Mako sharks swim together in a shiver? So do you think that Mako sharks all swim together in one group? What do you think? What do you think? If you are saying no, you are correct. Mako sharks do not swim together in a shiver. They do swim, they tend to be lone sharks in the ocean and swim by themselves. My next then question, do you think that white sharks swim in a shiver in our oceans or in a large group? Do you think that great white sharks swim in a shiver or a large group? If you are saying no, you are also correct. We do not see gray white sharks swim in large groups in our ocean. Now we might see two or three in the same area swimming around, but we do not see them move in big groups from one area to the other in our oceans. And my last question is, do you think that hammerhead sharks swim in a shiver? Hmm, do hammerhead sharks swim in a shiver? That's a tongue twister, swim in, in, in a shiver. <laughs> and that answer is yes. Some species of hammerhead sharks do swim in large groups in our oceans. This is really when they are 
migrating from one spot to another where you see these large groups of hammerhead sharks swimming together in that shiver. Now my next shark behavior question is, in Finding Nemo, we see Bruce, Anchor, and Chum all resting to listen to each other speak at a meeting. Can all shark species rest and stop moving for a period of time? Now, this is a review question from one of our lessons last week. So if you remember this, you might get it right. Can all shark species rest and stop for a move and stop moving for a period of time? Hmm. If you are saying no, you are correct. So some shark species do need to keep moving in order to breathe like our great white shark, the hammerhead, and the mako. These are all species of sharks that actually need to keep swimming in order to breathe underwater. Do we remember what sharks and all fish have that makes them able to breathe underwater? If you're saying gills, you are correct. Now, there is a special adaptation that some sharks in our oceans have that allow them to be able to kind of rest at the bottom of the ocean floor and they can able and they are able to breathe while staying still. Does anyone remember that special adaptation's name? Hmm, do we remember? If you're saying the spherical, you are correct. Now we have smaller species of sharks like our nurse shark, the spiny dogfish, the chain dogfish, the wobbegong shark, that have these little spiracles that are right behind their eyes that help pump water down into their gills so they are able to relax at the bottom of the ocean floor. So this is something that Finding Nemo didn't get right, that these species of sharks that are shown in the movie cannot rest. Now, I didn't get that. Now Can my next, that? sorry, Siri thought I was talking to her on my watch. My next question is Bruce, Anchor, and Chum are trying to stop eating their fish friends. Now, do sharks only eat fish? We, if we remember in the, the movie, they have their vowel that is fish are friends, not food. But do we think sharks only eat fish? Hmm, what do we think? If you are saying no, sharks do eat many species of fish, invertebrates, marine mammals, some eat squid, some eat stingrays, but it really depends on the species of shark. Remember, we have over 500 species of sharks in our oceans. So in each species has something different that they eat. Now, do we think it was accurate to portray Bruce, the white shark, as mainly a fish eater? Hmm. Do we think that Bruce in their meeting saying that fish are friends, not food, do we think that it was accurate to portray Bruce as only eating fish? Hmm. If you are saying no, you are correct. Our great white shark does eat species of fish, but it also eats marine mammals like seals and whales. But what's really interesting is that when great white sharks are pups, or meaning when they are just born and when they grow into their juvenile years and before they reach adults, yes, they do only eat fish. It's really only when we see great white sharks reach that adult stage in life is when we see them eat marine mammals such as seals and whales. And they'll also eat other species of fish as well when they are adults. Now, the reason why great white sharks do not eat seals when they are in their juvenile or their kid stage of life is because one, their teeth are different. We all know that great white sharks, they have that triangle shaped tooth that has serrations on the sides. But when they are born, they have a triangle shaped tooth, but it doesn't have those serrations on them. 
They're really more just flat, but they're sharp. So their teeth on that stage of life is more specialized for just get catching fish and sometimes squid. But when they get older and those teeth with serrations start to grow, those teeth are more specialized in eating marine mammals like seals and whales. So this is something that Finding Nemo, again, really didn't portray too accurately. Now, do we think though, are sharks of Anchor and Chum, the Mako and the Hammerhead, do we think they eat fish? Do we think the Mako and Hammerhead, do we think that they eat fish? Hmm. If you are saying yes, you are correct. Makos and hammerheads do eat fish and hammerhead sharks can also eat stingrays as well. So let's go on to our next question. My next question, Marlin the clownfish explains to the sharks that he's trying to find his son Nemo. Bruce then reveals that he never knew his father. Do sharks stay with their parents after they are born? So what do you think? Do you think that baby sharks stay with their parents once they're born? Hmm, do baby sharks stay with their parents once they are born? If you are saying no, you are correct. No, sharks do not stay with their parents after they are born. So as we were saying that when sharks are born, they are already born with that inherent ability to hunt and to feed and to be a shark, which is pretty cool. And with that, this is something that Finding Nemo did portray accurately that Bruce would have not known his father. So with that, guys, let's get right back into it with my next question of shark behavior in Finding Nemo. So here we have the famous chase scene between Bruce and Marlin and Dory. So when Marlin and Dory show the sharks a diving mask and the mask hits Dory in the face, giving her a nosebleed, Bruce, who is a few feet away from her, smells the blood and tries to eat Dory and Marlin. Do sharks have a sense of smell? So do we think that Bruce was able to smell the blood coming out of Dory's nose. We also think of this as that Bruce did not keep his promise of fish are friends, not food, which is not good. You should always keep your promises. But do we think that sharks have a sense of smell? If you are saying yes, you are correct. Sharks do have a sense of smell. This is one of the this is one of the ways that sharks are able to find their food in our oceans is using that sense of smell. Now, going off of that sense of smell, and here is that photo of Bruce smelling the blood coming out of Dory's nose, is is a shark's sense of smell better than its sense of vision. Hmm. Do we think a shark's sense of smell is better than its vision? What do we think? Do we think a shark's sense of smell is better than its vision? If you are saying yes, you are correct. Sharks can smell things that are more than 100 meters away but they can really only see ob objects or they are within 100 meters of them. But still, seeing something that is 100 meters away is still a really good sense of eyesight. But yes, sharks do have an incredible sense of smell. They can smell things up to 100 meters away or more, but they can only see things that are within those 100 meters. So this is something, again, that Finding Nemo did portray accurately that sharks can smell. My next question is, with Bruce a few feet away from Dory, could he sense her with his sense of electroreception? Now, if you remember from our talks last week, if you joined us then, 
we learned about that sharks have a special sixth sense, which is that their sense of electroreception. So sharks have these tiny little pores all around their nose and their mouth area called ampullae of Lorenzini. And that ampullae of Lorenzini is that shark's sense of electroreception. And that electroreception is that sharks can detect electrical and bioelectrical pulses in the water. And that bioelectrical pulse meaning of heartbeats of animals around them. So do we think Bruce could sense Dory, who was a few feet away from him, using his sense of electroreception. Hmm, what do you think? If you are guessing, no, you are correct. So sharks can only sense something with their electroreception if it's very close to them, about 60 centimeters which is a little less than a foot long. So Dory would have to be a little bit closer to Bruce for his electroreception sense to work. Now, do you think that just Bruce, the great white shark, has this special sixth sense? Or do you think all sharks have this special sixth sense of electroreception? Hmm. Well, Yes, all sharks have this awesome sixth sense of electroreception and that ampullae of Lorenzini all over their nose area. So with that, guys, we are done with looking at how sharks in Finding Nemo are portrayed versus real life sharks. And we can see that some groups, they did get right that Bruce didn't know his father, he could smell the blood, but also they didn't get some things right with how sharks like Bruce Anchor and Chum or the Great White, the Mako and the Hammerhead do have to constantly swim to breathe and they cannot rest. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Kristen Kibblehouse. I'm the Community Engagement Manager here at Atlantic White Shark Conservancy. Bye guys.